I quit my teaching job <laughs> after 14 years. Why? How do I feel about this? That's what I feel like talking about. How do I feel? Can I tell you? <laughs> How do I feel? Oh my goodness. I hope I can express how I feel. Don't get me wrong. I love my job. Actually, absolutely love being with the children. Love it. They are so funny. Like there's so there's so much surprise in teaching children, being with them every day. But it also comes with challenges. I tell you, it comes with challenges. You get anxiety before. This is real and uncut. <laughs> you get um, anxiety. I not really bad anxiety. Not anxiety that you can't manage. But before the start of every week, and I know it's not just me. Many teachers say this as well. Sunday night, you're thinking about the week ahead. You have to be on top of your planning. You have to be on top of your lessons some weeks you have people coming which it's a part of the job so it's manageable and you do it and you get through it and you get through it successfully every single time i was good at my job the children loved me i did my job successfully but i did it for 14 years the same thing over and over again how do I feel about not doing it? Well, in in May this year, we were sent an email about um, choosing our new class, what class we want for September. And I'm like, do I want to do this again? Another class of children to go through the same thing? You know, you don't get adequate support because the system is so stretched same thing again like there's so much to it that I can say that I'm holding back from saying right now but how do I feel let's stick to how do I feel I feel relieved I feel a bit apprehensive about my new job it's still working with children and families but I won't have 30 children saying miss miss Francis he did this she did that and they're like talk it out to work it out or something like I won't miss that <laughs> I won't miss that being on my own with 30 children constantly complaining not 30 of them complaining because you do have some that complain more than others because some of them can manage their own conflicts and they don't really some of them don't really have conflicts either it's like a little world you know being in a classroom is like you're in a little world with different people different personalities Everyone has their good points, everyone has their bad points, everyone has their strong points. Some people can manage on their own, like not so dependent on you. Some have initiative, some don't. So it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Totally enjoyable, but not easy. It comes with a lot of stress and anxiety and planning and managing which is all a part of the job but when you do it and you do it and you do it and you do it for so long and you're doing the same thing with for 14 years with no variation every class is different but every class has similar personalities to the children before the children that you had before so if you had difficult children you're gonna have different and some years you have more than the previous years before and it doesn't get it doesn't vary it doesn't vary it's the same thing again and again and the same rules and every school you go to it's the same things schools trying to find the best way to do things the training is the same you know it's just the same 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 and for 14 years i just thought and i've been thinking for a few years now that it's probably time to do something else but I was reluctant to take that leap and now that I've taken that leap I'm just thinking I'm here in the summer holidays 
and I'm not thinking about a new class in September like to me that's crazy like how can I not be thinking about having a new class in September I've done it for 14 years every summer I know I've got some idea by the beginning of the summer holidays or the end of the school holidays I already have some expectation of what my class is gonna be like and then nearer to the time to September now you start more putting things in place about your classroom where you're gonna set up your classroom and what your provisions you might put have to put in for specific children and I just can see a parent from the school like the school I taught at so it's just different I can't believe like summer holidays and I won't I won't be going to a teaching job in September that feels amazing at the same time it feels like what a bit surreal <laughs> but it still feels absolutely um, refreshing so my advice is if you want to change change your job just go for it like for years often I've typed into Google what other jobs can a teacher do I'm gonna put this into a different video actually but yeah how did I another video is gonna come up how did I build the courage or how did I find another job after teaching? What did I do? And just go through it because I'm no pro on this. It's just what I did and it's what worked for me. So I'm gonna do a video about that, but I can't believe that I'm not. This is just about how I'm feeling. I'm feeling relaxed, but also overwhelmed by just the thought, maybe not overwhelmed, but surprised, shocked, in disbelief, but very relaxed and excited about learning a new job learning a new job so I, I think I should also do a video about the interview that I did for my new job yeah so thank you for watching and welcome to my channel this is a new channel and on this channel I hope to just talk about teaching and maybe still put up stories and things like that because I do still like it and I think a part of me will always be a teacher and a part of me will always be to have an influence and a positive one at that positive impact on children so if I can do that through YouTube I think I want to try and do that I want to try and build a YouTube channel around my life as a teacher and maybe put things up that children can enjoy as well so unfortunately i can't sing but we could try a thing you know <laughs> but yeah i can't believe i'm not going to be teaching in september after 14 years i'm going to miss my children but you know what children move on you don't have the same class and that's when you just start teaching you think oh i love this class and you feel like you've built a relationship with these children you see when they move on to the new teacher they they forget some of them even forget your name they walk down the corridor and they want to say hi and they go hi miss and they pause because they want to say their current teacher and they think mm -mm, that's not her name some of them remember your name just like that and forever but there are some who won't remember your name either the that the following year or the year after or at the beginning of their new school year they'll remember you but give it a few months they walk past you and they don't even say hello and these are children that you felt close to when they were in your class so you can't hold on to it because of the children because they move on you've got to move on too and then every year so for 14 years i've got all these names of children in my head because i've done it for so long but they move on so in life we all move on the children adjust and so can we so i'm not worried about that aspect of it i'm just excited about my new role and not just my new role for the next year or two but for years to come because i've got a plan about where i want to go and i'm gonna work at that and do what i have to do and hope and pray that it all goes according to plan but yeah for now i've got a new job and i'm happy about that very grateful about that as well as thinking hmm how am i gonna you know like life together as it is but yeah at the park feeling relaxed not having to think about 
going into that job but looking forward to something else something new i like change i think i do well with changes it inspires me Alrighty, thank you for listening thank you for watching bye like like subscribe and share it's not on us it's not on us at the moment I forgot about this strand. The the lighter swimming pool. We should go there. Not today though, because we didn't prepare for that. That's what I've been trying to tell you since the other day with Ivory. That you need to book the in. See, that's the outside area. That's, the, I'm to that's you. why the um, car park is so full. It's not even not the playground. It. It's the swimming pool. <laughs> I wasn't recording and I was chatting away. So, as I was saying, we're going for a walk and then we're gonna come back diana's gonna go to the park but we're just going for a little stroll first along the medway and river also, let's show you and also i brought my little baby it is. Her birthday today, you can smell it the water the seaweed the fishy smell Welcome to Talking Telescopes, a project celebrating the history of the Strand since it first opened in 1896. As part of the project, students from Mid Kent College collected a number of people's memories of the Strand, particularly during its heyday in the 1950s and 60s, to give a flavour of its meaning and importance to the local community. You can listen to a selection of these memories by using the buttons on the front of the telescopes whilst taking in the extensive views across the estuary to Hu Island and beyond. Those telescopes, I think, those blue telescopes, so we'll go in a minute and see if we can do what it said to listen. Gillingham Swimming Club 1920. See, as a class, you could have visited here and get some history the children to come and see the strand showing part of the promenade promenade the promenade 1960 the beach 1950 I saw a black telescope over Mom was born 1957, so she would have been three, living in London when that was when that was taken. 1980. Hmm. 1980, she was living in Jamaica already, because my brother was born 1977 in Jamaica. So my mom was born in London. 1957 so seven years after that picture was taken my mom came my nan my grandma came to england now in 1930 something that was 1920 1930 something this was like a few years before nanny came to england 
And by 1980, my mom was already living in Jamaica. They must have went to Jamaica 75 because Ian born 77 in Jamaica. I, I saw a telescope in there. I can't understand it. All right, let's go down to this one and see if this one works. Let's see if it works. Move your head, listen to our memories introduction. Is the breeze? That's all I can hear. <laughs> yeah, all I can hear is. Oh, well, that breeze. was a waste of money. <laughs> it's not even going to work. I mean, yeah. someone would have had. To, we didn't pay, but someone would have, would have spent money on that. Let's install it. That's what. That's what. <laughs> That's what. In my language, that means that doesn't make sense. That's farts. Yeah, in that language, it means that doesn't make sense. That means it's rubbish. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to go down there? Yeah. I, I wonder if there was sand here in the 1960s when it was actually somewhere to come in the summer. Or were they? Wallet, what's the word? Wallowing in this. See you later. Have fun. children's paddling pool which is closed it's dirty a big one they haven't cleaned it up this summer picnic area riverside walk miniature railway you are here parkland and outdoor gym i don't know where that is that's up next to the road okay i know where that is netball football and tennis courts they're over there they are through the trees over there side football and basketball court yep yeah you're right we are living history because everywhere we travel to everywhere you go to has like... has got history we're not the first people oh, yeah, to yeah. go there like look at that old boat that boat would have some history like the first people to have gone on that boat probably died a very long time ago probably involved in some war as well oh my goodness imagine <laughs> look at those very old well, it's, I wonder if I can find some history online. Would have been transporting things back and forth. Mm -hmm. These. What's yeah. that right there? I don't know. Some sort of anchor. I think it's anchor for the boats. Mm -hmm. So they would have. Because they've, they've, they're along. There are loads of them going along. It's like a marker, an anchor thing to put their anchor in, I think. I don't know. I think it's something to so that the, the boats yeah, on. Yeah, and that's what it means when I say anchor. So the boats don't get pulled away. By the sea. And that's the Medway, River Medway. I don't know why they say it that way. River Medway. So. There's like one. Two, three, four, don't. Suppose you twist your ankle or something, jumping. Huh? Go to the front camera. Sorry. 